I've built over 20 AI projects, but here are the top two you need to build if you want to be an AI engineer. Fine tuning an LLM and building a RAG workflow. If you know what those are, you know that they're not anything special. So we'll go over how you can make them unique. And if you don't know what they are, no worries. We're going to go over what they mean and the libraries you need to code these up. Let's get started with project number one, fine tuning an LLM. First, what does fine tuning mean? Well, we have general purpose LLMs like chat GPT. They can code, they can write essays, they can make a travel itinerary. They're not really specialized for any one particular task. If you want an LLM to excel 10x or 20x at one particular task, fine tuning is usually the way to go. Let's say you have a custom data set and you want GPT to perform 10x for your specific use case. Fine tuning might be a good option here. Let's say you have notes from a class or even a personal diary with information about you that you want GPT to have access to so that it can understand you better, fine tuning might be a good option here. And the best part is that you don't need an expensive GPU for this, like the ones used to train GPT, thanks to a matrix multiplication trick called LoRa. You also don't need any massive data sets for this, like the entire internet. You can actually fine tune a model with as little as 100 data points. How do you actually make the project unique? Well, one way is to simply choose an interesting data set. So a lot of people fine tune models on SQL queries to make them better at generating SQL queries. And some people fine tune LLMs on competition math problems so they can get better at these more advanced problems. If you choose an interesting and unique data set that nobody has fine tuned an LLM on before, it will stand out more on your resume. Of course, this isn't really anything novel. It's really going to stand out more to non-technical recruiters. We all know that they don't really understand the projects that you write on your resume. When you eventually explain your project to a technical hiring manager in an interview, that's when it'll be critical to actually be able to explain every step of your project. If you want to get even more creative and make your project even more unique, you can use advanced fine tuning techniques or even come up with your own. For example, most people might fine tune LLMs on competition math problems by simply giving the problem and the correct answer and the model is trained to generate the correct answer. What if we train models on incorrect answers. We actually told the model during the fine tuning process that these are incorrect answers and they have to try to find the missing logic or flaw in the reasoning of that incorrect answer. That might be a more unique fine tuning technique. Okay, how do you actually do this project? First, you need to choose which model you're going to fine tune. Some models like GPT are obviously closed source, so fine tuning them is going to be a lot more difficult. I recommend choosing an open source model like Llama from Meta or even GPT-2. This is an older version of GPT and it is open source. Next, you need to choose a proper data set. Because you're going to be fine tuning on a very small data set, maybe 100 to 500 data points, the quality of every single data point is going to matter a lot here. I recommend Hugging Face for finding high quality data sets. As far as the actual libraries you'll need, you're definitely going to use the Transformers library from Hugging Face so that we don't have to deal with the neural network details of the transformer for this project so we won't be really diving into PyTorch layers for this project. It's going to be a lot more abstraction. You're also going to want to use the bits and bytes library to make this more computationally feasible. The bits and bytes library is going to quantize the model, which means we're going to reduce the precision of all of the numbers and calculations going on inside the model. Instead of using 32-bit numbers, we might use 4-bit numbers, drastically reducing the amount of memory on the GPU we need. Thankfully, performance is mostly preserved. That's all for fine tuning and on to project number two, RAG. RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. I know it's a mouthful, but it's an important concept if you want to be an AI engineer. It's actually an alternative to fine tuning. Let's say we want an LLM to have access to data that wasn't in the original training data set, like internal private company documents. We wouldn't include this in the original training data set for security reasons. For a custom company LLM, the model needs
needs to have access to this information. RAG is a strong option here and can be less time consuming and computationally intense than fine tuning. Let's go over a quick example to understand RAG. Feel free to skip this if you're already familiar with RAG. Let's say we need a chatbot that answers HR questions in a company. That way we can completely get rid of HR. Just kidding, HR does serve a purpose in every company. The first step is called chunking. We need to take all of the HR documents, chunk them into paragraphs or pages, and store them in a vector database. We'll go over this vector database later in the video. Then, during the RAG workflow, whenever someone asks the LLM an HR-related question, there will be another model, a retriever model, which will search the vector database for the relevant chunks that could help answer the question. Effectively, pages from the long document, our original document, then these relevant chunks of information will be pasted into the prompt or context for the LLM. The LLM can sift through this long context and effectively and concisely answer our question. That's the idea of RAG. Simply want to add more context to the LLM prompt first searching a vector database. How do you make this project unique? You're going to want to choose an interesting data set. Again, that doesn't really make the project anything special, but it will stand out more on your resume and look different than other people's projects, which will at least stand out for non-technical recruiters. When it comes to impressing hiring managers, the most important step is to understand the neural network details every part of your RAG workflow. This helps you more effectively understand the limitations. Once you've chosen your data set, you're going to want to choose your LLM from Hugging Face. Open source models are a great and cheap option. You're also going to need to choose a vector database like ChromaDB or Pinecone. Lastly, choose your retriever model, which is as simple as instantiating it like this, and use the LangChain library to put all of these components together, from the LLM to the retriever to the vector database. If you're looking for a more in-depth explanation of RAG, let me know in the comments. And next, check out my video on whether you should grind LeetCode or machine learning.